NFL recap, week 17. This is the end of the regular season. Not a lot to discuss. Uh, we're going to skip the uh, the early games, I think. I mean, New well, England it's, blows it's, out the Jets. Yeah, it's so. not necessarily skipping the early games. We're going to talk about the games that matter. We're going to roll through yeah. this um, and, and, and talk about the games that actually affect it. Uh, let me let me talk about this real quick. Uh, New Orleans, Teddy Bridgewater. Oh, okay, I mean, start, uh, just just to touch on it, uh, we all thought that he was like the next in line. He was going to be the great one if if Breeze decides to retire. Uh, Fourteen out of twenty two, not terrible. One hundred eighteen yards, eh, whatever. One touchdown, one pick. Well, but That's he did, twice. He he didn't he didn't have Kamara play. Um, Ingram played limited time. He only got five touches in the game. Um, I don't think, you know, obviously New he, Orleans he obviously already had wasn't, home field wrapped up. He wasn't so playing matter. with starters. Okay. Yeah. I don't like, know. Kyle, Mike, Kyle Mike, Allen looked pretty good. Michael um, Thomas only played half the game. I mean, yeah, there was no there was no particular reason for him to. How would to he look, look if he had his full gang of? Players that that play for the yeah, you got a point. You got a point. Uh, Dallas beats uh, the Giants. Uh, now this is something interesting you brought up to me uh, that you wished you had seen before you put out your gambling picks because you took the Giants minus six. I, I took the and I made the bet and then before the game kicked off, I don't know really what I'm doing. I'm just kind of scrolling through my phone and for some reason I look at standings. Why I look at standings before the games all start, I didn't know it, and, and it's not something I habitually do. And I realized. If they get six wins, it could kill them in the draft. I mean, yeah. they could fall a ton of spots, not just like lose one or two spots. And I was thinking, why would I? Why did I bet on a team? And, and it's easy to say in hindsight that they lost the game and they didn't cover. But like, I, it it just logic tells you you shouldn't have made that bet. It was just a bad pick, um, and uh, I just got caught up in. I didn't really like a lot of the lines because I don't. You don't really know how to gauge week seventeen. I just figure oh, I've bet against Dallas a lot this year. Let's just keep doing that. And then I realized, man, the Giants, realistically, they can't win this game. Like, they, it would be foolish for them to win this game. Yeah. And and still, they were in it. Like, and they were still in it. No, they were trying to win it. Somebody, somebody needs to talk to their front office a little bit. But Yeah, because it would have cost them, what, seven, eight, yeah, nine I mean, draft it, picks. They, they realistically could have fallen, yeah, yeah five or six Because you go from pretty, five wins to yeah. six wins – you're tied. You're tie tied breakers. with about seven or eight teams that all have six wins. Yeah, and that's not a good spot to be in. Uh, Kansas City whips Oakland, uh, the Rams, and San Francisco. That was maybe closer. Like it was forty-eight thirty-two. That was a weird, weird spot. But game didn't matter. Game like, didn't matter. Like the game um, did not matter for Seattle. Atlanta, Tampa Bay. Uh, Sarkeesian was fired from Atlanta. Uh, Tampa it's, Bay fires just about Cutter. seventeen games late. Yeah. Uh, Detroit 31, Green Bay nothing. Uh, Deshaun Kaiser showed out. <laughs> Why? Well, hey, hold on now, hold on. Rodgers played that game. Rogers I know. I know. He, game, he went out with a concussion, and, and he got nothing too. Did you hear the Pat McAfee call of the the fake uh, field goal? That was fantastic. Yeah, it was pretty yeah, good. We we need more of that guy. He got shared out all over Twitter oh. and Facebook. It was pretty good. Oh, he was he was great for his debut. Uh, Buffalo whips up on Miami. Buffalo gets to six wins. You had the under five and a half on the season. I, the when they kept scoring points, I was like, "Oh no!" Okay, I was pretty upset, and, oh, and I didn't. No. I, and I had an opportunity to hedge because I had the, I had the bet. Well, I could have easily, easily just bet Buffalo money line, and laid about the same equal juice, maybe half of it. Could have, could have eased off of it a little bit, and then I chose not to. Yeah, I mean it happens. Yeah, it happens. Uh, New England whips up on the Jets. The Jets fire uh, Todd. Bull- let's let's go through before we go into the uh, the games that mattered. Let's go through the firings. Okay. Tampa Bay fires Dirk Cutter. Hang on. We're doing this New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. So there will be more. There could be more. I, I would imagine there will be more. I don't know. I think most of them are gone that we thought would be gone. Yeah, but somebody's going to pop up and, and be out of here. I don't know about that. Like, it, it happens every year. I think everybody else is safe. If they didn't get fired already, I think they're there. I mean, you might be right. I'm, like looking, I- I'm looking through the teams. And and I can't like I would imagine Greg it. Williams probably not coming back to Cleveland. Well, yeah, but Greg Williams isn't. But that's the not head coach. He's an interim coach. Um, yeah, I mean, I okay. Let, let's. I go mean, obviously, the list. Green Bay is not going to keep. Um, oh, what's his ass? Joe uh, Philman. Philman. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think the Giants are keeping everybody Shermer. else is safe. Carolina might make a move. Maybe I don't know. 
Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I mean, I, Rivera won that last game. It, it it didn't matter for the Saints, but whatever. I thought there was a chance Atlanta could could fire uh, their head coach, and and they they obviously are giving Quinn a another year, and just going to say we're going to make changes at the coordinator position. Yeah, uh, Tampa Bay fires Dirk Cutter. Now, I think they're keeping Jameis Winston for another year. They're keeping the GM, and I think that is the biggest mistake. Yeah, I, I absolutely think. If anybody should be fired, it would be him. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, the Jets fire Todd Bowles. They are uh, going to prepare to uh, – they're going to offer Jim Harbaugh from all the reports that are out there. And I mean, it's a good situation, right? I mean, I, Tom Brady getting older. I don't know um, that it's a good situation in the sense of they've got two players on that team that are decent talent. One of them is elite-level talent in Adams – and the other is Sam Darnold, and we really don't know what he is. We don't know be. what he is. I, I kind of feel bad for Todd Bowles. Todd Bowles is going to get a D.C. job somewhere, and I, I will tell you this, wherever he gets hired on, that defense is going to greatly improve. Uh, you know, that's an interesting uh, thing that you bring up because on the way to the studio this morning, they were talking about Bruce Arians possibly taking over the Tampa Bay job. Oh. Remember, Todd Bowles was his D.C. at they, Arizona. They, I, see, I don't know why they were talking about that, because Bruce came out earlier this year and said, I'm only going to interview for one job. If they'll let me interview, I'm only interviewing for one job. And that's the Browns. That's the Browns. Now, I would love, love to have Todd Bowles be the defensive coordinator of my Cleveland Browns. I think I agree with that. And Bruce Arians be my head coach. Uh, the Dolphins fire Adam Gase. That was a little surprising. That one shocked me. That one really. Shocked I, I me. thought they liked Gase down there. He's but he he's done what every other coach in Miami has done for the past forever, uh, which is seven and nine, eight and eight. They don't have somebody in the general manager's office have messed up the quarterback situation. They've got talent on that roster. They don't have a trigger man at all. No, not at all. Not at all. I, right. And I don't know that that's Gase's fault. I think Gase got as much as anybody could ever get out of the guys they had. I mean, he was winning games with Brock Osweiler. Yeah, which nobody else has been able to do. Nobody else has been doing that. Bengals finally fired Marvin Lewis. What do you think? Open it up for <coughs> Huey Headlines. Hugh Jackson. Hugh Jackson. Come on down. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. I, everyone kind of thought that they were going to not fire Marvin, but move him up into – a management office because him and the owner had such a great relationship. It's very what? strange yeah, to was, me that was that didn't happen. For the last four years, that's been what's going to be – that's been reported as to what's going to be happening. Now, if they fired Marvin Lewis, like, are they going to keep Hugh Jackson? Because Surely like, not. I wouldn't think so. Surely they're clean house. But that was – I mean, that was exactly what was reported, reported. all year. The report was not going to be firing Marvin. It was going to be moving Marvin up and then moving Hugh in. Yeah, I, if you're gonna fire Marvin, you cannot leave any stone on. He has been there too long. You must destroy the entire thing and build it back. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the Cardinals fired Steve Wilkes after one year. That was not surprising. I've been talking about that all season. They looked like they didn't know what they were doing all year. Now they they had a pretty good effort against Seattle yesterday, but. The game didn't matter for Seattle. Well, and they should they were foolish to even try to win that game. Like I'd have fired him just because what are you doing? That might be. You win that, that game. We get the number one pick. You you I mean you lose that game, we get the number one pick. You win that game and we're behind Oakland. What are you doing? Yeah, it didn't make didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Um let's see. Vance Joseph. Vance Joseph. That's the next one. That one? So we we already talked about Sarkeesian, right? So we'll get that one out of here. Yeah, Broncos uh, fire Vance Joseph. I got no idea where they go. I don't know that. Did, uh, so so back to let's let's talk about Sarkeesian because I think this kind of plays in. Um, the Broncos, like Elway, mentioned that he wanted Gary Kubiak to be his head coach, but like uh, Kubiak resigned, retired, whatever. He Health just couldn't reasons, deal with. It. He just can't handle it. But. Kubiak is now the the leader to be the OC for the Falcons. Is it just the stress of being the head guy? Yeah, no, well, Kubiak said that. He's been the OC in the past. He stepped down to be an OC the last time this happened. And then and then they convinced him to take the head coaching job, and then it happened again. And 
No, I th- I think I think Kubiak absolutely wants to be the OC somewhere. He does not want to 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 be a head coach. He he I don't think his heart can handle it. He doesn't know how to half ass it. He doesn't know how to yeah. let let other people do certain things. And so if he has to run an offense, you're going to give him his responsibility and he could do that. And that's enough for him to be able to physically handle with with his heart and his condition and and I, and I think that's fine. Um man, I think that's a Wherever he goes, the offense is going to improve. That guy knows how to coach an offense. I think he'd be. He's fine really good. In, in, we need in, to have uh, a conversation, in, in and and I guess we've been kind of having it all all year, and and other people nationwide are having the same conversation. This is why I disagree with ever, 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 ever bringing back a legend for any job. Yeah, if you are a god in my town and you've done something amazing and you retire and you move on. Don't ever come back except for to sign autographs. Let me put you in the ring of honor. Wave hands, shake hands, you know, wave to the crowd and and, and be be a face because this is going to hurt Elway's legacy. There are going to be people that never watched Elway play football, and this is the only football knowledge that they know of him. And the quarterbacks that he's drafted are Lynch and Osweiler, and the other quarterbacks that they've surrounded themselves with have all been pretty much huge embarrassing failures. And it's just one of those things to where maybe he's just not good at evaluating talent. And, yeah. and if you're going to be a team president and a general manager, that's kind of the job. I mean, the the Broncos went, what, 3-10 and 10 to close out the season? They started 3-0. Yeah, that's right. Started off 3-0. And, and now they're 6-10. and 10 And, yeah, Vance Joseph, like, he never gave them any particular reason to keep him. So they, they weren't great at anything. One of one, and I refer to these guys all the time because I listen to a lot of NFL talk and I read a lot of things from the NFL uh, from a lot of different writers, many different writers. My two favorites have been this year, have been and uh, Robert Mays and and Kevin Clark from the Ringer. Robert Mays has this philosophy that if he was a general manager, he would never in today's football, the way the game is played, he would never hire a defensive coach as a head coach ever again. And the reason yep. being is because if you hire a great defensive coach and they hire a great offensive mind for an OC, that OC is just going to get snagged away. Yeah. And he's going to get the next head coaching job somewhere else. And you're going to have to be – if the quarterback is the most pos- important position, then then the OC has to be almost the second most position. Whoever's going to call plays. Yeah. And, and you need that to be the head coach because nobody's hiring head coaches away – for other head coaching jobs. It just doesn't happen. Nobody goes into Detroit and says, I want your head coach, and they take him. This isn't college football where people take lateral moves. Yeah, no, you're right. If you're, you, if you're, you're right. but but very few people are going to come steal your defensive coordinator away. And very few defensive coordinators are that valuable that that if you lost them, it would cripple your team. But we've seen OCs leave and cripple teams. We we saw um. Uh, oh my gosh, man! I'm really bad with names this weekend. This is like the fifth time through the last two podcasts we've recorded. Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan, yeah, do amazing things in Atlanta, leave, and then Atlanta falls flat on their face. Yeah, two years straight can't do nothing. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm with you. I mean we've we've seen OCs really or whoever the play caller is really hurt them. You just want to. I don't know that I completely buy into that philosophy, but I like to think about it. Being the Browns fan that I am, like I, I really hope they hire an offensive minded guy. Yeah, I mean you'd have to hope. Um, let's see. I, I'm reading from Cleveland.com. Freddie Kitchens will be interviewed for the Browns' head coaching vacancy. He is one of the interviews. They're going to interview uh, Williams too. So yeah. So I mean, they, obviously you got those two. And I think Greg has earned the right. But here's the problem. So let's say let's say they they. They give Greg the job. Okay, let's just say they keep everything in path. And they give he the him him the full time OC job. If if the Browns average thirty five points a game next year, he's gone. Yeah. Now we're trying to replace him. We got a young quarterback and a young offense that we're building around and and every year we're just changing up the OC. You can't do that. Interesting article here off topic a little bit. Doug Marone confirms Jags voided Leonard Fournette's guarantees. Well, yeah, that's yeah, that's 
So we're going to get into just random news. Yeah. When Leonard Fournette got when Leonard Fournette got suspended, there's a clause in his contract that allows them to void all guarantees. So he what still did, gets paid for when he plays. What did you think of um, uh, what what Tom Coughlin came out and said after after the Jags got beat twenty to three by the Texans, uh, where he was talking about Kenyon Drake and no uh, T J Yeldon. I was about to say sorry T J Yeldon and uh, and Leonard Fournette about how that's uh, behavior unbecoming of professional athletes and whatever because they weren't really involved in the game. Yeah, they just weren't playing much. Yeah, they they. I mean, sat they weren't playing much, but they just sat on the bench the whole time and like didn't get involved in the plays and whatever. And and I don't. I'm not going to. That's def- just kind of weird. Yeah, to, I'm not going to def- defend Leonard because he's an LSU guy or whatever. But but listen, man, this is week 17. You've missed the playoffs. This game means nothing at all to the Jags. Winning it actually hurts you. But Tom Coughlin is this old school football guy, and you're not changing his mind on the way things are supposed to be ran. He wants things to be. He wants these millennial and Gen Z guys, these kids, to to respond and react the way you know the greatest generation did fighting World War II. Like people just we're just not that way anymore. Yeah, and the That's... coaches that are doing the most innovative stuff know how to communicate with these younger kids. Yeah, Lincoln and, Riley and, and to talk about yeah. that. Yeah, I mean even even in the NFL, I I think Kyle Shanahan gets along great with these guys. I think even the older coaches that at least put younger guys in charge of the team to make these conversations happen and to, and to communicate certain things, there's just a certain way you have to talk to them. But if you're expecting in a game that does not matter in which these two players aren't playing a lot of snaps anyway, yeah, what do you want them to do? You want one of them is not on, even active. You want them to be on the sidelines just rah rah in the team? Like what is that? Does that make you a better football team? I don't think so. Does that win games? Because I don't think that that helps you win games at all. I don't wh- whether T.J. Yeldon was up involved in the offensive huddles or not. I don't think they scored more than three points yesterday. Nope. Like I don't. I don't know were, that that equates to points or wins. The Texans were trying to get a first round bye. They were going to win that game. Now, if you're going to tell me that their locker room problems, then then that I think chem- team chemistry and locker room issues are a big deal. I just have a hard time believing those two guys might be the locker room problems when the biggest star on your team runs his yak to the rest of the league more than anybody else and had a complete dud season yeah. in Jalen Ramsey. Like, like come, come at me about locker room problems with Leonard Fournette and, and TJ Yeldon when you fix Jalen Ramsey running his yak. Yeah. How's he improved? And that's the highest paid player on the team. Yep, you're right. Well, maybe not, but he's – Pretty pretty impressively. He's, he's well known. Yes. He's well known. And we'll he, say that. And he's he's probably the face of the team. He is right now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's talk about games that uh, that mattered yesterday. We'll we'll kind of roll through them. Chicago twenty four, Minnesota ten. This one surprised me. I thought Chicago like it, they knew what their situation was. The Rams are probably going to win. Uh, I thought they'd kind of. Like sit some guys after halftime, you know, take it easy a little. Lay bit. down and let Minnesota win so they could play Minnesota the next week. That's kind of what I thought. All right, convince. All right, if I'm watching Minnesota and the Eagles play right now, I'd rather play Minnesota. Okay, but I'm I am not a big fan of kind of picking my opponent. I think that seems to come back and bite people. You yeah. go out there, you play the best you can, you let the cards fall where they may, and and then the next week you line up and you play that opponent the best you can. Yeah, no, you're I, right. I, you're if, right. If Minnesota goes on this crazy historic run again and Nick Foles wins another Super Bowl MVP. At the Eagles, we're, you mean? We're, yeah, that's it. I'm sorry. Then, then we're going to have a completely different conversation to be had, but I don't know that that conversation is going to go, man, Chicago should have just laid down and let Minnesota win. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, Pittsburgh beats uh, Cincinnati, sixteen to thirteen. They, Burley, they, Burley, Burley. Um, and then all the players for Pittsburgh and the fans are still sitting in the stadium watching the jumbotron, pulling for the Browns. That is correct. The strangest situation to be in. That was just something else, man. Um, I mean, I, I, obviously, I'm a Steelers fan. 
So I was pulling for the Browns. I was pulling for the uh, for the Browns anyway because of you. Like I, I'm kind of tied to him now. I appreciate it. Um, Baker's fun to watch. He is a lot of fun to watch. I mean, he's and I pretty thought, damn fun to watch. I thought they had. I mean, they needed what five yards for a field goal. Yeah. Now here's the other thing. I mean, had the touchdown taken away from him, the defensive touchdown yeah. that, that that everybody in the world says, why you blow that whistle? I mean, I will tell you, when your team is on national TV. And you get Tony Romo to call your games. I just think it's a gift. I really do. Yeah. It doesn't happen often for Cleveland. It's happened a lot for the Patriots. But but I mean it is it is an absolute joy to have him call your game. He he absolutely tells it how it is. He does not care who he hurts. And it's not like he talks a lot of smack or trash, but if but if the officials are wrong and one team got something they shouldn't have got, he has no problem saying you should have lost that game, whatever. I'm pretty good with the outcome. I'm good with the outcome. I, I, There's no team in the NFL that I have hated more than the Baltimore Ravens in my lifetime. But you know how much in the tank I was for Lamar Jackson. Oh, yeah. Before the season started at the NFL draft, I was pretty devastated. There were 30 teams he could have went to, and I'd have been just fine. I didn't want him to go to Baltimore. I didn't want him to go to Pittsburgh. I'd have been pretty upset if something weird would have happened and he went to the – Cowboys, but that wasn't going to happen. Um, I guess now, watching that game and watching the last couple of weeks, my dislike and distaste for the Baltimore Ravens have kind of eased up a little bit. And I, I feel so weird I mean, they're, saying look, it's, that. It's, it's, but if you're I just a fan like, of old school football, then then you like what they're doing. Oh, I am. But I'm just I'm I'm that in the tank for Lamar. Not that I'm going to be a Ravens fan. That will never happen. Ever, ever, ever. I just won't wish death upon him. (laughs) And if I have to choose between them or the Steelers now, it's kind of an easy choice. Also, I, I I needed the Browns to not win that game. We've had this conversation. I just don't want them to get Mike Malarkey'd. We've had, we, we live in Tennessee. We have the Titans local. When he was the interim coach, he did exactly what Greg Williams did. He took over a, just a completely inept team that Jeff Fisher just couldn't do anything with, and he all of a sudden sparked a fire, and they played pretty great and for a couple of weeks. And then he got the job. And then for four or five years, it was just like, this guy doesn't really know what he's doing to be a head coach. But we got enough talent to win just enough games to not fire him. Oh, yeah. And every I mean, now and then he'll they, win the division because the division was bad. Well, he he didn't even win the division last year, but he but he beat the Chiefs in Arrowhead in That's the playoffs right. and and then went to Foxborough and got his brains I, beat I in. I cannot and, believe the Titans had the balls last year to fire him. And I, I'm so proud of him for it. Yeah. I think that's the it's absolutely the right call. When he beat the Chiefs, I thought it's another year of mediocrity football. Yeah. Yeah, I mean you're you're right. So anyway, I I I, I think let's let's talk about the Titans game, real quick. Let's talk let's talk got, about that. We got the Greg out, but I might be wrong. Indianapolis thirty three, Tennessee seventeen. Uh, so Mariota doesn't play. He is questionable all week. He practices on Thursday and Friday, and then comes out late Saturday, and it's announced that he will not be playing. His agent released it that he's not playing. That's right. That he has been told by doctors if he plays, he could sustain permanent damage. I think this was the nail in the coffin for Mariota. They might they might keep him around one more year because they've got that fifth year option. That's right. And it's a pretty good contract. And it's a good contract. And you know, you you try him out one more year, but I, I think at this point you cannot extend him right now. It's also a, a pretty seemingly going to be a bad quarterback draft yeah like uh, you you don't want to go into this draft when you've got you don't need a quarterback you got next herbert year. and tonga Valoa and whoever coming out next year like you're going to want to go and look at those guys um because i think you know what you've got with Mariota. he hadn't been able to finish three of his four seasons that's it like this was the biggest game it's not just finished in seasons. tennessee last it's, year he finished the season but he missed a lot of games yeah i mean it's it, you, I don't know what you do in this situation. Uh, your availability is more important than your ability. That's just the way the NFL yeah. has always been. There's a 53 man roster you got. That's it. You, you you can't have your star player, the 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 most important position player, be up in the air every week, every week. 
and that's what you got. Yeah. No, you're right. Um, Indianapolis finishes winning nine of their last ten. They they started out one and five on the year. Andrew Luck looks like he is on fire Incredible. right now. Incredible. Incredible. Yeah. And Frank Wright coached some football. Yeah. I mean, he absolutely did. I mean, that is just who I mean, just I'm 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 actually really excited to watch because there was a time, I mean, we talked about this. I didn't think Andrew Luck would ever play again. Yeah, I think both of us did. I mean, he missed two seasons. Not just missed two seasons. It wasn't until this year, like a month before the season, was he actually not throwing a Nerf ball and throwing a real football. Yeah. I mean, now you're talking about a month before the season started. Not spring training. Spring training, he was still not not throwing. Not spring training. Spring season. He getting baseball and whatever. Make that. <laughs> Preseason. Yeah. Yeah. He was. He was. He was early on. Was not throwing a real football. Yeah, I mean it's it's nuts. I was and so I, I'm going off the only info because we're not insiders. We don't have those connections. I'm going off the only information I got, which is he still hasn't thrown a football. But everyone's saying he looks good throwing whatever he is throwing. And, and I just ball. and I just don't buy into that stuff. And I thought this guy's never gonna play again. If he does play, he's gonna get killed. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you this: a guy that because offensive linemen just don't get credit for this type of stuff. What Baker did this year was a lot of fun. Baker is a lot of fun. He is going to be a lot of fun for years to come. Uh, Nelson should absolutely be the rookie of the year. Quentin Nelson is the rookie of the year. He is the meanest, bulliest, nastiest offensive lineman we've seen drafted as a rookie in a long, long time. Yeah. But it's just not not something they're ever going to give to a lineman. But he he's the rookie of the year. He changed the identity of that team. They went from having the worst offensive line in the league to one of the best. I know they got a lot of new parts in there, but that guy is the monster in the middle that just pushes people around. Yeah. No, you're right. You were talking about culture change. That kid, as a rookie, has changed the culture of that offensive line. No, you're you're right. Uh, the Eagles were 4-5 and five at one point, uh, lost to Dallas, went and got blown out at New Orleans, Won five out of six to end the season. Um, they lost at Dallas, close game, but playing the wrong quarterback. They they Nick Foles now has started three straight games. He was twenty eight out of thirty three yesterday, two hundred twenty one yards, two touchdowns, one pick. He he got knocked out late, rib injury. Um, but he it's already been confirmed he will be starting next Sunday. Um. I mean, the Eagles, like, they, they look like a completely different team with Foles at quarterback, I'm, don't they? I, I stand. It's weird. I, I know that people think I'm ridiculous. I stand by my statement. As soon as the confetti fell, you trade Carson Wentz. It's, you know, so I was watching. I, I know that people think I'm ridiculous. I was watching after the, uh, the Chicago-Minnesota game yesterday, and Terry Bradshaw brought up the question of, like, well, who, who would you start? Like, Carson Wentz or, like, Wentz is out. Wentz is out. I think, but they were like, who would if they you were start? If, if they were healthy, would you start Foles or, or Wentz now? And Terry and some of those other guys were like, well, I mean, Wentz is your guy. So, like, you got to go with your Play, guy. No, players don't believe you should lose a job due to injury. And I just don't see the world that way. I don't either. I think the best man plays. Yeah, and, and the team is playing better with Foles right now. Just absolutely. I'm going to tell you this. I think there's some leadership qualities, and this is not a knock on Wentz. But Foles obviously has some type of command in a huddle that that Wentz is missing. Yeah, because this is the exact same. I mean, it's not like they're a healthy team. Okay, their running back situation is not good. Their receivers not great. Like they're hurt all over this team. Offensive line guys in and out constantly. Foles is driving the same car Wentz was driving. They just look better with him, and it's not that he's making better plays or throws that Wentz can't make. Because Wentz is more mobile and can use his legs a lot better than Foles can. I think the team listens to, to Foles better. They seem to trust him more. I, I just what I see with my eyes, the offense looks everything looks more crisp, the routes look better. And I don't know how to attribute that to anything other than they trust one guy more than they trust the other. Yeah, I I agree with you. Uh we talked a little bit Baltimore twenty six to twenty four over Cleveland. Definitely the most exciting game of the day. It was no doubt. It was win or go home for Baltimore. Um, 
they lose, they're out of the playoffs. They win, they're, they're in the host playoffs. a playoff game. That's right. Big so it did, this was a pretty big deal. Uh, Baker, I thought, played really well. I, Lamar Jackson looked pretty good. Uh, this was a fun game. This Baker, was a lot of fun. Baker and Lamar playing twice a year. That that's I'm telling you, Big Ben's getting older. I have no idea what's going on in Cincinnati. This is this is what's going to run the, the AFC North for the next five six years, hopefully decade. It'd be fun. I don't know that Lamar can hold up that long. Um, I, I mean, we'll see. But it was fun for this year. He is he is running the ball like twenty something times a game. How many did he run yesterday? Do rushes, you know? uh, rushes. I have no idea. Hold on, I, and, I and then I don't up. know how they how they factor rushes and sacks because yeah, sacks, sacks right. goes against uh, passing yards. Uh, he had so he was sacked twice, uh, fourteen out of twenty four for one hundred seventy nine yards. He ran the ball twenty times for ninety yards with two touchdowns. He did have two fumbles. He lost one of them. Yeah, yeah, that one fumble should have been returned uh, yeah. back. Hundred percent, hundred percent. No, what he's. It is. Th- these two are going to be fun. Hey, you read about that. I, I'm very nervous who they're going to hire as the coach. That's that's. I, I'm so. I want him to make the right hire. I want. I need the hire tomorrow, but which is usually the wrong thing to do is to make the fast hire. But I I just don't know that I can handle anxiety like this. <laughs> I, like I woke up this morning. At like four in the morning, just just scrolling through Twitter. Anything, anything, anything. Like we we got any Browns news? I'm yet. taking a shower and I get like the alert and I see that that John Dorsey is 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 at the podium and I'm I'm like dry my finger off. All right, switching over to that. No, I'm just like, and all he's saying is, is I'm not gonna, I'm going to interview the two guys in house. I'm not talking about anybody else. I'm interviewing, and that's all he said a hundred times. You gonna interview this guy? Well, what about this guy? I'm not talking. About, I'm thinking. I'm yeah, getting no, no information, and I just need to know. Yeah. If he would just tell me, I wouldn't tell a soul. <laughs> I wouldn't tell. So if somebody gets this John Dory, just shoot me a text, just shoot me an email. You, and you wouldn't sh- share it with the viewers. And I no, no, I wouldn't tell you. I wouldn't tell my wife. I wouldn't tell anybody. I wouldn't tell my kids. Nobody. You just need to know so your anxiety is a little to, better. I just need to know. I can't be waking up at four in the morning every day doing this. That is our NFL Week 17 recap. As always, go to tunicatravel.com for more information on Tunica, Mississippi's fantastic sports books. Go over to winningcureseverything.com for our podcasts, picks, previews, et cetera, et cetera. Follow us on social media and hit that subscribe button.